Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how we can utilize the focus stacking photography technique in order to get images like this or this without the use of a tripod. Normally, for a focus stack, you need to lock your camera on a tripod because the exposures must match perfectly when it comes to framing. But who locks around a tripod everywhere they go, right? So if you want to know how to do it without a tripod, don't stop watching the video. So, the idea behind focus stacking is that, for instance, if you want to photograph a scene where you have a very close by foreground like this V-shaped tree here, and a very far away background like this monastery on the hill, it's really hard to get both the foreground and the background in focus. Now, for portraiture, it's, of course, it's more aesthetically pleasing to have shallow depth of field, but for landscapes, sometimes it looks way cooler to have everything in focus. You might say, okay, I'm just gonna close down the aperture and increase my depth of field and get everything in focus. But closing down the aperture can really get you only there to a certain extent. And also smaller aperture means longer shutter speeds, which for handheld is not really ideal, right? Also, if you close down the aperture to more than f16 on most of the lenses, diffraction really starts kicking in and it can ruin the sharpness of your overall image. So you don't wanna go down that road. So typically with a focus stack, you lock your camera on the tripod and then it, you frame your image and you take multiple exposures by manually focusing on different parts of the image. And then in post-production, you can blend those images together and because the framing is exactly the same, you can take the parts that are in focus of every exposure and create the final image. So how on earth are we going to do it handheld? Well, let me show you. So normally when I shoot for focus stacks handheld, I press the camera to my face to give me an extra point of stability. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to do it in live view so you can follow along. Okay, so what you want to do right now is first make sure that your camera is in autofocusing mode. Then make sure to select the one shot AF. So not continuous, but one shot AF. And then select single point autofocus like this. This white rectangular box in the center of the image is the autofocusing point. Also, in order for it to work, make sure that for the final framing, the autofocusing point sits somewhere in the background, not on the foreground and it's in a place that the camera will be able to lock focus on so it cannot be an empty blue sky for instance or something like this it's best to use manual exposure in order to not have discrepancies between the frames but if you do there's a trick in lightroom you can do to match the exposures i will show it to you later on also i'm showing this at 2.8 and it's actually a pretty sunny day right now and normally i would close down the aperture to around f8 or something like this but in order to exaggerate the effect I'm going to keep it at 2.8 and then what you want to do is pan the camera a little bit so that the autofocusing point aligns with the foreground then half to press the shutter when you hit the confirmation of the focus pan the camera back but keep the shutter half depressed frame your shot and then in quick succession fully depress the shutter then let go and fully depress it again like this so you can see that I have two shots one is focused on the background and the other is focused on the foreground so what happens is that if you half depress the shutter with your camera panned to the side and the autofocusing point aligned with the foreground, the camera will lock focus on the foreground. Then you pan back, the camera is still focused on this foreground, then you fully depress it, take the first shot of the foreground in focus, then quickly let it go and fully depress it again so that the camera refocuses on the background and takes another shot. If you do it quick enough, the framing will be very much similar to each other and then in post-production you can align it and blend it like you normally would if the camera was on the tripod. So let's jump into the computer and let me show you how to edit this. So we are back at the computer and I have imported all the images into Lightroom. Here are the two exposures that we're going to use to make our final focus stack. As you can see, one of the images is focused on the foreground. You can see those trees in focus. And then on the other exposure, you can see the background in focus, but the trees are not in focus. Like I said earlier, I was shooting this in manual exposure, so the exposures match perfectly between those two images. But if you shot it at some kind of an aperture priority or at the automatic mode, your exposures might not match perfectly when it comes to brightness. So in order to match them, you can select both of them, click on one, then command or control click on the other, and go to settings, match total exposures. I'm not going to click it because mine are perfectly matching, but if yours are not, you can click it and then they will match. 
So I have applied some basic edits to those images. Nothing fancy, just some contrast, compression of the dynamic range, added some texture clarity and dehaze. Make sure that you sync the adjustments between those two images so the tones and everything matches between them. Then you want to select both of them, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. This will open both of the images in one Photoshop document. You can see that we have both of them here. Make sure that the one on the top is the one where the foreground is in focus. Usually the foreground occupies less space in the overall image, so it's easier to blend it if it sits as the top layer. If we toggle this eyeball here, we can see that our images are pretty well aligned. But in order to make sure that they are perfectly aligned, we're gonna select both of them. So click on one, then holding the command and control key, click on the other and go to edit, auto align layers. In this window, you can leave it at auto, but for here, we know that reposition should be enough because all that could happen between those is that we move the camera slightly. So I'm going to select reposition and then click OK. OK, Photoshop is done. It has aligned those images. We can see here at the top that the top layer has moved down a little bit and we can see there's something from beneath. So we're going to need to cut it out. But first, let's actually confirm that the alignment is correct. In order to tweak the alignment or do the alignment manually if you wish so, you can select the top layer, go to blending modes and select difference. The difference blending mode means that for each of the pixels, Photoshop is subtracting one pixel value from the other. So if the outcome is black, it means that both of the pixels in both of the layers were exactly the same. So the darker this difference kind of rendering is, the better our alignment is. We can see that in this part it's pretty black and the part of the trees is also pretty black. The only part when it's bright are those edges here and of course those leaves of the trees that are moving, but this is not an issue. If you want to further tweak the alignment, you can keep the top layer selected and hit Command or Control T to activate Free Transform or go to Edit, Free Transform. And then using the arrow keys, you can move the top layer around and observe the outcome. Okay, I think this is the best alignment that we can have. So just click here in order to confirm it. Then toggle the top layer back to normal blending mode and then activate the crop tool because we need to crop the edges out. So make sure the ratio here is the ratio of your original image if you want to keep the aspect ratio, which I generally recommend. And then just crop in a little bit, maybe something like this. Let's say this is the composition we are happy with. Now we can just confirm and start blending the images. For this, Photoshop also has an automatic tool, so you can select both layers again, go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. From this, you want to select Stack Images and Seamless Tones and Colors needs to be checked. Click OK and wait a little bit. Now, because the leaves of the tree are moving to the wind, we can see that Photoshop did not do a good job here. If we toggle this back and forth, we can see the issues. So actually, I'm going to undo it and I'm going to blend it manually. So there is no universal solution for blending. It really depends on the kind of composition you have. But here we can see that our foreground has a pretty well defined edges, those trees here. So we can use the magnetic lasso tool in order to select the trees. You can spend as much time as you want to make the selection perfect. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Then also add the selection of the left tree to this selection. Make sure that this icon is selected, which means add to selection and select the other tree. The magnetic lasso tool tends to not select the edges of the images very well. So in order to amend this, we're going to select the regular lasso tool. Then make sure this icon is again selected and just selected the edges roughly like this. Now that we have our selection, Make sure the top layer is selected and click this button which means create mask. And the stuff that was selected is visible from this layer and everything that was not selected is not visible. So we can see this reflected in our layer mask right here. Again, on the layer mask, white reveals, black conceals. Alright, now our image looks pretty good already. What we can do is just zoom in and run through all the edges and tweak them if needed. So, zoom in. Make sure that the layer mask is selected, activate the brush tool. You can hit the X key to activate the default color set and also hitting the X key will toggle between white and black. 
So make sure that white is selected, adjust the size of the brush accordingly, and then we can paint in our edges here. Again, you can spend as much time as you need to in order to make this blend perfect. I'm going to do it just roughly for the sake of this demonstration. You get the idea. This looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. If you need to hide something from the top layer, just hit the X key again to activate the black color and just paint in black. Obviously, I'm going to undo this, but I just wanted to show that this is perfectly possible. And that's basically it. This is how our final image looks. At this point, we can just close this, make sure to hit save, and our image automatically pops out here back in Lightroom. We can see that we have a perfect focus stack where both the trees and the background is in focus and it's exactly what we wanted to achieve. Oh man, summer is over, but that means that I get to wear my favorite jacket from 66 North again. It's an Icelandic clothing company and I cannot recommend it enough. It's, they make really the highest quality jackets I have ever worn. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. All right, so that's basically it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. It really makes a difference. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this. And I also make travel videos, vlogs, photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials. So if you're interested in any of that, you know what to do. But that's it for now. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.